How's it going, folks? I am listening to an official bootleg by um, Dream Theater of Pink Floyd. And I'm listening to Second Disc, a saucer full of Floyd. I hope you can see that. Hard to find, worth tracking down. Let's see. Unfiltered wheat ale. Oh yeah, look at that. All that sediment. Yeah, it's apricot ale. And you can really taste the apricot. It's got quite a head on it. This is it, folks. The final chapter of Most Sion. I'm sure you've all been waiting for this. We got a ways to go here. I've been thinking. I've been at the six months and I've gotten this far. <laughs> I can't drink any faster. <sighs> and now, when Mosiah had done this, he sent out, throughout, he sent out, throughout, all the land among all the people desiring to know their will concerning who should be their king. Now they sent all the princes away. Yeah, the sons of Mosiah. They're on a, on a mission. They're missionaries. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came saying, We are desirous that Aaron should uh, be our king and our ruler. Now Aaron had gone up to the land of Nephi. Therefore the king could not confer the kingdom upon him. Neither would Aaron take upon him the kingdom Neither were any of the sons of Mosiah willing to take upon them the kingdom. Nobody wants to be king. What does that ever happen? Right here. Take my kingdom, please. <laughs> uh. Therefore, King Mosiah sent among the people, yea. Even a written word sent he among the people, and these were the words that were written, saying, Behold, O ye my people, or my brethren, for I esteem you as such, I desire that you should consider the cause which ye are called to consider, for ye are desirous to have a king. Now I declare unto you that he to whom the kingdom doth rightly belong has declined and will not take upon him the kingdom. And now if there should be another appointed in his stead, behold, I fear there would rise contentions among you. You're a scared little guy, aren't you? And who knoweth but what my son, to whom the kingdom doth belong, 
should turn to be angry and draw away a part of this people after him, which would cause wars and contention among you, uh, which would be the cause of shedding much blood and perverting the way of the Lord, yea, and destroy the souls of many people, destroy them. They must not be made of matter, then. It don't matter. <laughs> now I say unto you, let us be wise and consider these things, for we have no right to destroy my son. Slippery slope. Neither should we have any right to destroy another if he should be appointed in his stead. And if my son should turn again to his pride and vain things, he would recall the things which he had said and claim his right. Wow, is that how his mind works? to the kingdom, which would cause him and also this people to commit much sin. And now, let us be wise and look forward to these things, and do that which will make for the peace of this people. Therefore, I will be your king and uh, the remainder of my days. Nevertheless, let us appoint judges to judge this people according to our law. And we will newly arrange the affairs of this people, for we will appoint wise men to be judges that will judge this people according to the commandments of God. So it's like the book of Samuel in reverse. Now we're in Judges. Now, it is better that a man should be judged by, of God than of man, for the judgments of God are always just. But the judgments of man are not always just. And then there's those satanic verses you have to factor in. I hear Joseph Smith had satanic verses, too. <laughs> Therefore, if it were possible that you could have just men to be your kings, who would establish the laws of God and judge this people according to his commandments? Hopefully with a little more intestinal fortitude than you, Mos Mosiah. Yea, if ye could have men for your kings who would do even as my father Benjamin did for this people, I say unto you, if this could always be the case, then it would be expedient that ye should always have kings to rule over you. And even I myself, have labored with all the power and faculties which I possess to teach you the commandments of God and to establish peace throughout the land, that there should be no wars nor contentions, no stealing nor plundering, nor murdering, nor any manner of iniquity. And whosoever has committed iniquity him I have punished according to the law which has been given to us by our fathers. Now, I say unto you that because all men are not just, it is not expedient that ye should have a king. Or kings to rule over you. For behold, how much iniquity doth one wicked king cause to be committed? Yea, 
and what great destruction. Yea, remember King Noah, his wickedness and abominations. I'll drink to that. Worth the wait. And also the wickedness and abominations. Mm, that is yummy. Of his people. Behold, what great destruction did come upon them, and also because of their iniquities they were brought into bondage. And were it not for the interposition, interposition of their all-wise Creator, and this because of their sincere repentance, they must unavoidably remain in bondage until now. But behold, He did deliver them, because he, they did humble themselves before Him, and because they cried mightily unto him, he did deliver them out of bondage. And thus doth the Lord work with his power in all cases among the children of men, extending the arm of mercy towards them that put their trust in him. Sometimes it just takes an awful long time. You've got to have faith. And behold, now I say unto you, ye cannot dethrone an iniquitous king, save it be through much contention and the shedding of much blood. For behold, he has his friends in iniquity, in, in, in iniquity, and he keepeth his guards about him, and he teareth up the laws of those who have reigned in righteousness before him. And he trampleth under his feet the commandments of God. And he enacted laws and sendeth them forth among his people. Yea, laws after the manner of his own wickedness. And whosoever doth not obey his laws, he causeth to be destroyed. <clears throat> and whosoever doth rebel against him, he will send his armies against them to war. And if he can, he will destroy them. And thus an unrighteous king doth pervert the ways of all righteousness. And now, behold, I say unto you, it is not expedient that such abominations should come upon you. Therefore, Choose you by the voice of this people, judges, that they may be judged according to the laws which have been given you by our fathers, which are correct, and which are given them by the hand of the Lord. Now it is not common that the voice of the people desireth anything contrary to that which is right, but it is common for the lesser part of the people to desire that which is not right. Therefore, this shall ye observe and make it your law, to do your business by the voice of the people. Look at Judges. And if the people come that the voice of the people doth choose iniquity, then is the time that the judgments of God will come upon you, yea, 
then is the time he will visit you with great destruction, even as he hath hitherto visited this land. And now if ye have judges, and they do not judge you according to the laws which have been given, ye can cause that they may be judged of a higher judge. <sighs> and if your higher judge do not judges do not judge righteousness, ye shall cause that a small number of your lower judges shall be gathered together, and they shall judge your higher judges according to the voice of the people. Sounds great. And I command you to do these things in the fear of the Lord. For I command you to do these things. And that ye have no king. That if these people shall commit sins and iniquities, they shall be answered upon their own heads. That's verse 30, read exactly correct. Nope. <coughs> there it is. All right. For behold, I say unto you, the sins of many people have been caused by the iniquities of their kings. Therefore, their iniquities are answered upon the heads of their kings. <coughs> And now I desire that this inequality should be no more in this land, especially among this my people, but I desire that this land be a land of liberty. And every man may enjoy his rights and privileges alike. That's mighty wide of you. So long as the Lord sees fit that we may live and inherit the land, yea, even as long as any of our posterity remains upon the face of the land. And many more things did King Mosiah write unto them. Oh, see, he's pretty ballsy when he's writing something down. King Mosiah, uh, yeah. And many more things did King Mosiah write unto them, unfolding unto them all the trials and troubles of a righteous king, yea, and the travails of the soul for their people, for also all the murmurings of the people to their king, and he explained it all unto them. Thanks. <laughs> and he told them that these things ought not to be, but that the burden should come upon all the people that every man might bear his part. Wow. If the bard was a hillbilly, hillbilly Shakespeare. Or William Tyndall. Yeah, maybe William Tyndall was a hillbilly. My apology to hillbillies, actually. I think you're pretty cool. I'm just having some fun, all right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> ought not to be, but that the... Oh, uh, bear their part. Yeah, let's hear that. how they expect to do that. And he also unfolded to them... Uh, all the disadvantages they labored under by having an unrighteous king to rule over them. It's almost over, folks. Yea, all his iniquities and abominations.
These guys kick ass. Dream Theater. I've been trying to collect all their bootlegs. Apparently they get bored playing their own music. So for once in a while they'll do a concert where they just cover someone's album that they admire. Which is awful cool. I mean, I think it is. It's, these guys are geniuses. Yea, all his iniquities and abominations and all the wars and contentions and bloodshed and the stealing and the plundering and the committing of whoredoms <clears throat> and all manner of iniquities which cannot be enumerated telling uh, them that these things ought not to be, that they were expressly repugnant to the commandments of God. And now, it came to pass After King Mosiah had sent these things forth among the people, they were convinced of the truth of his words. They were satisfied. Of course, they got to hear a lot more than we did, like all the explanations. Therefore, they uh, relinquished their desires uh, for a king and became exceedingly anxious that every man should have an equal chance throughout all the land. Yay! And every man expressed a willingness to answer for his own sins. Therefore, it came to pass that they assembled themselves together in bodies throughout the land to cast in their voices concerning who should be their judges to judge them according to the law which had been given them. God, it's like the Bible in reverse. <laughs> At least this part is. <sighs> And this, they were exceedingly rejoiced. Wait, and they were exceedingly rejoiced because of the liberty which had been granted unto them. <clears throat> and they did wax strong in love towards Mosiah. Yea, they did esteem him more than any other man. For they did not look upon him as a tyrant who was seeking for gain. Yea, for, for that uh, liqueur, wait, lucre, yeah. That lucre, which doth create, that lucre, with the which doth corrupt. I'm not editing the editing this. Fuck it, uh, and which doth corrupt the soul. Wish I could do that whole thing. <laughs> For he had not exacted riches of them, neither had he delighted in the shedding of blood. It seemed kind of squeamish, actually. Uh, but he had established peace in the land, and he had granted unto his people that they should be delivered from all manner of bondage. 
Therefore, they didn't steam him, yay, exceedingly beyond measure. Lucre. All right, I got it. Lucre. Yeah. And it came to pass that they did appoint judges to rule over them or to judge them according to the law. They got a choice. That's not good. Follow the fucking law. What is this? Or. And this they did throughout all the land. Apricot. And it came to pass that Alma was appointed to be the first chief judge, uh, he being also the high priest, his father having conferred the office upon him and having given him the charge concerning all the affairs of the church. And now it came to pass that Alma did walk in the ways of the Lord, and he did keep his commandments, even though, who's this he's? His. It's uncapitalized. I know it's God. And he did judge righteous judgments, and there was continual peace through the land, and thus, asterisk, B.C. 91. And thus commenced the reign of the judges throughout all the land of Zarahimla, among all the people who were called the Nephites, and Alma was the first chief judge. <coughs> that his father died, being 82 years old, having lived to fulfill the commandments of God. That's Alma Sr. That'll cut down on the confusion. Not really. <laughs> that was wishful thinking. And it came to pass that Mosiah died also in the thirty and thirty and third year of his reign, being sixty and three years old, making in the whole five hundred and nine years from the time Lehi left Jerusalem. <coughs> and thus ended the reign of the kings over the people of Nephi, and thus into the days of Alma, who was the founder of their church. That's Alma Sr. And I will see you guys in the book of Alma. We're done with Mosiah. It was fun. Now we're done with you. Peace. The fuck. Out. And, uh, track this down. <laughs> Anything else by these guys? Bye.